Hello and welcome everyone to session 18 of our daily Bible study. We are now at a crossroad in the book. In terms of content and context, we could split the book of 1 Peter into two parts. The first finishes at verse 10 of chapter 2, which is where we are up to now. And the second starts from verse 13 onwards. So we have these two verses, 11 and 12, which we will be looking into today and tomorrow. The first part of the book of 1 Peter focuses on what God has made us, both individually and together. The second part discusses what the practical outcome of this is. So right now, for today and tomorrow, we are on the bridge with the beliefs on one side and the practical implications on the other. And it's important to understand that each side of the bridge has to be strong at each end. You know, it is possible to either be too academic or too practical about faith. And we need to have a healthy balance of both of these aspects. Let me pray as we start and then I'll share verse 11 with you. Father God, I thank you for your word and the opportunity we have to read it so freely. And I just pray you come through your spirit and speak to us now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 11. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. The focus today has two themes. Firstly, with our new identity that has come with everything that Peter has described in the first part of this letter, we are now identifiable as strangers or refugees or exiles in a new land. Secondly, with this new identity comes a new conflict, a war that is internal. A war that our sinful desires may have with our souls. There is a clear message which comes with the first theme. We are temporary residents. Should we try and fit in? When in Rome, do as the Romans, as they say? Or should we attempt to be different, to keep our identity? Peter's response for Christians is simple. But he doesn't actually address it in these verses here. He does so a little bit later on in the letter. So in chapter 4, verse 3, he says, Don't attempt to be the same morally. And in chapter 2, verse 16, he says, But make sure you are not deliberately awkward. So what's he saying? Well, morals play a huge part in identifying someone who is of God. Jesus said, it is by how you love one another that you will be identified as my disciples. God is the foundation of objective morality and so it is inevitable wherever we go in the world there will be views which counter our own, views which counter what we know to be right in our hearts and views which counter the Bible. As followers of Christ, We are told to hold fast to the truth that we know and not to give in to peer pressure, not to go with the flow to make life easier. As I was preparing this, I was reminded of Daniel in the Old Testament. As he was taken to Babylon as a young man, very early on, he had to make a decision on whether he was going to go along with what was expected of young Babylonian men, or if he was going to make a decision to stand out from the crowd for God. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 11, he demonstrates so well how to stand out, but not to be deliberately awkward. To go along what was needed to, but to the point um, where he knew it was just too far. So he agrees to eat all the food that is prepared for him, but he asks not to have to eat the meat, which would have caused him to become unclean and defiled under the, under the law of Moses. He makes a compromise though, that if he looked worse 
than those servants who were eating meat after 10 days, then he would go and eat meat. However, he had faith in God that this would not be the case. And as we see when we read on, Daniel and his followers who ate only vegetables looked healthier than those eating meat. Now, this is not me trying to tell you to become a vegetarian. I certainly am not. What I'm saying is that in the context of Daniel, he had faith in God to give him all that he needed. He wouldn't let himself go against what he knew to be right before God. But he wasn't deliberately awkward. He was diplomatic. And as a result, he was a shining light to those around him of what it looked like to be faithful to God. And many, many other people who were um, exiles in Babylon followed Daniel's example. It was because of his witness that it changed the course of history for the entire nation of Israel. As the king of Babylon saw over time the amazing work of God through Daniel and others. The thing is, if we forget that we are foreigners, exiles, refugees in a foreign land, that we are supposed to be different, set apart, and we allow our actions to change over time so that we fit in more and more, the only result will be that we will have an ever-growing inner turmoil as we grow further and further away from God. And we will lose his peace that we only get when we have a good relationship with him. So we actually start a war with our own souls. So the message for today is to remember that as Christians, we are to be considered as temporary residents in a new land. That means we are expected to view things differently from those around us. This may come at a cost, but the alternative is to wage war with ourselves over what we know to be true in our hearts. All of this is only possible through the grace of God. And so let me finish today by praying. Father God, I thank you again for all of these challenges. And I pray that firstly, through these, you help us to hold true to your word so that we can be shining light to those around us, Lord. But secondly, and more importantly, Lord, that we can have a close personal relationship with you growing ever closer as time goes on, not further and further away. So guide us in this through the power of your spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.